Hi Myers friends and family, my name is Angela and today I'm going to do operational videos on both the Verve and the Accord machines. They're both very similar machines, um, so we'll be kind of going between both of them. I'll primarily be showing sewing on the Verve and the embroidery on the Accord, but a lot of these are interchangeable. Um, obviously you can see that the threading on the Verve and the Accord are a little bit different, so we'll show both of those. Um, there's a little bit more stitches that are available on the sewing side for the Accord. Um, and then the Accord has two hoop sizes, a four x four and a five x seven, where the Verve only has the four x four. Um, but a lot of the features are very, very much the same. Um, so we're very excited you got your new machine and we're ready to teach you how to use that machine. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about the accessories that come with the machine. Um, pretty much the same accessories come with both the Verve and the Accord. Um, so I'll just show you the ones out of the Verve right now. Um, so obviously you have the machine, um, it comes with a power cord. It also comes with a, um, a foot, a foot pedal. Um, for demonstration purposes today, we're not going to use that. Um, it comes with the embroidery arm, which we have installed on the unit here. I'll show you how to swap those out. We also have the sewing arm that goes on it. Inside of this has a little pocket or little container to store things. It has this little baggie that's full of all these fun little things. And so we'll kind of dump these out and I'll show you what's all in it. So you're gonna have a spool cap. So this helps hold your spool on the top of your machine. You have a screwdriver, which you're gonna use to change your feet. We'll show you how to change between the embroidery and the sewing feet. Um, you have, this is your embroidery foot. It's a rather large unit is the embroidery foot. You have the zipper foot, or sorry, this is the buttonhole foot. This is the zipper foot. Then you have your standard sewing foot, your J foot. And then you have a couple other feet, stitch in the ditch, and a couple other ones. You can definitely refer to your manual to get more information on those. Um, I definitely want to spend more time on the embroidery of this. We'll do some basic sewing. Um, and then, of course, you guys will have bobbins. These are class 15 bobbins. So these are the ones that Baby Lock recommends that you use on these machines. Um, we also have another standard sewing foot and the ankle for the sewing feet are pre-installed on the machine right now. So now uh, this machine currently is set up with an embroidery foot and the embroidery arm. I'm gonna show you how to switch this to sewing so we can demonstrate the sewing features. Um, so with these machines, both the Verve and the Accord, um, you wanna make sure that you turn off the machine anytime you're attaching or removing the embroidery arm. So that is very important. So that's why our machine is turned off right now. So in order to remove the embroidery arm, there's like, you kinda of grip your finger in like this underneath and there you'll feel there's a little lever and then you'll pull it out and when you do that you can find your accessory one and you can just slide it right back into where it was okay so the next step we have is right now we have the embroidery foot installed so we want to switch it to the the standard ankle and sewing so there's a screw over here i've pre-loosened it but more than likely you'll need a screwdriver to help you get in there You take that foot off. And again, here is your ankle. Sometimes you can install it with just the ankle and the foot. To attach them, there's a, a button on the back and there's a bar across the front of the foot that when you install it on, it clips together like that. So either way, that's just as easy to put on when it's on the machine, but for now. And just to show you, this is a little tricky. So. In here, right in this groove, is where you're gonna get the screw on there. So you need to get this angled under there. You may need to even lift the presser foot lever, which is back here to help give you a little height. Sometimes you need to loosen the screw just a little bit more. And then you tighten it up like that. Now, once you have your foot securely attached and your embroidery arm off, now you can turn on the machine. So to explain a couple things on the side of the machine, you have where your power cord attaches, you have where your foot control pedal will attach, you have your power button, you have the USB port, which we'll discuss when we get to the embroidery portion of it. So that's how we can import some files. And then you have the hand wheel. 
One of the other things that I kind of want to show you why I have it here is there's a little groove at the top of the hand wheel. So when we're rotating it and I want you to get the needle to, to the topmost position, this will line up here with the line on the machine as well. And just a quick reminder, whenever you turn this, you're always going to turn it towards yourself. So from here, we'll go ahead and we'll turn on the power. And this machine is actually really pretty smart. So if you don't have the embroidery arm attached, it'll automatically load into the sewing, the sewing screen. And so now we'll start discussing all the, the features of sewing. All right, so when you're working with sewing, uh, the first two components you're gonna need is you're gonna need thread and you're gonna need a bobbin that's filled with thread. So I'm gonna show you how to wind a bobbin on this machine. So on the spool, stand back here, we're gonna put the thread on. And then I'm going to put a spool cap on just to hold the, the thread in place. There's instructions on the top of the machine. It'll show you. So step one is to go through this little hook here. Step two is to go around this back finger right here. So we go around that. Step three says to go around and under this metal finger up here. So this contraption up here is only going to be used when you're winding a bobbin. When you we thread it regularly, you will skip this part. So you'll go around it in front of it. And then I like to hold my finger back here on the thread just to kind of keep it taut. And you slide it around this little round disc here. So it needs to make sure it goes underneath. And when you pull on it, you can feel it has a little bit of tension on it. So from then there, my trick, and the reason I do this, it's a little bit different than um, with sewing or yeah so with sewing it normally doesn't matter too much with embroidery if would you wind this bobbin it gets knotted around here when it reaches the end of the bobbin it can actually pull your whole project out of the hoop so I would much rather not have to deal with that kind of issue so there's actually a hole in the bottom of the bobbin and so what I do is I poke it from the top through the bottom so I have the thread sticking out of the bottom and then I load it onto this bobbin post and so if you can see if I pull on it right here that just the fact that I have the thread on the bottom it's pinching down on this which helps um, and then right here when you have slack here this is how to guarantee you're gonna mess up and get thread twisted around the wrong way so I always come back here and I tighten this up a little bit but you have to make sure you keep the tension on here so this between these two points, you need to make sure you have a nice taut string. So once you do that, then you can push this towards the right. And you'll see once that happens that this light turns orange, which means it's ready to wind the bobbin. So once you hit start, then it'll start winding the bobbin. Pretty easy. You can actually change the speed control a little bit. You don't ever want to go the, suit, the, the fastest, but you go to the top speed and back off just a little bit. And we'll wait for the the bobbin to wind and you'll watch that it's doing a really nice job if you see it's really sloppy and it's not real nice like this it means you don't have it wrapped around here very well but yeah this should be really tight you should see it going up and down and do a nice pattern at the same time you shouldn't see any of your threads sticking when it's coming off of your spool and when it's done it'll either hesitate like it's, I don't know if you can kind of see, it's starting to kind of hesitate and not quite stop. So we'll go ahead and hit stop. And we cut our thread. And so now we have our bobbin. We'll trim off any extra little thread we have here. And that's all there is to it. So now in order to install the bobbin, on the bottom here, next to our presser foot, you can see we have a little clear plate. In order to open this up, there's a little rectangle on the right hand side that you can just normally stick your fingernail in and just pop it to the side and you'll see that it pops up. And then you can pull this little, nope, oh, see now I did it the wrong way. So it just pops right out like that. So there's also a little picture on the bottom that shows you how you want to load your bobbin. So when you're holding the bobbin, you want it to come off on the left side, down towards the bottom. And what you do is you set the bobbin in there. So you still have the thread out. There's a little hook that's there. You want to make sure it goes underneath the hook. I'm going to go around and pull it down. 
Now one thing that's really important, I want you to watch this bobbin. When you pull this thread, you want to see that bobbin spin. If it doesn't, it doesn't lock in the tension disc. And then when you pull it over to the right, it'll actually cut the thread off. So that's how to properly install a bobbin. And then there's a little notch on the left side of the plate. So you can just angle that in and then push on the right hand side, you'll hear it click in place. And so everything's installed for the bobbin. So next I'll show you how to load the thread at the top. Again, we did this when we were winding the bobbin, so it should seem very similar. You put the thread in, you put the spool cap. You're gonna go through the first hook. Again, remember the instructions are on the top. So you can push through the first one. You've got the finger on the back that you wanna go around. Now this time, instead of going up here, we're just gonna go straight down, because you can see three is at the bottom. So you're gonna pull down, go down and up. And then up here is your take-up lever. So remember I mentioned earlier that we have this notch on the side of the hand wheel. So you want to make sure that this is all the way in the topmost position. If it isn't, you're going to rotate it toward you all the way up until it matches with the line on the side of the sewing machine. And if you look inside of here, it's really hard to see, but this will be in the topmost position. You'll see your needles all the way at the top. All right, so now I get my thread up here. So once you're like this, I like to make it very exaggerated where I swing it around like this just to make sure I catch it. And then I pull down. And so here's my trick to make sure that you caught it in there. If you put your presser foot down, which is the, the handle down here, when you pull on it, you can actually feel like the thread is really tight. So that actually helps you for the next step. Because the next step is six. You've got to lock it in this little clasp right above the needle. And so by this holding it, it makes it a lot easier to get that over into that sixth position. And you should hear it snap into place a little bit. Then you go through this metal channel right here, and then you'll see where it says seven. You're gonna go right over that seven. You're gonna come back here to the eight, which is the cutter. You're gonna wrap around the cutter and pull it. So then you have this extra little string here. And then all we're gonna do is push firmly on this, and you'll see that it's actually threaded the machine. So if you want, you can pull the extra loop out. and then you've threaded your machine. If you have any issues with the threading not working, most commonly it is that the, the needle's not in the topmost position, so you either need to turn the hand wheel, or there's also a button on the front of the machine that brings the needle up and down. If you bring it all the way up, it'll be in your topmost position. Other times I found it handy to have your presser foot all the way down um, in order to give the, the mechanism that does the auto threading room to get in there. Um, the other Thing that could go wrong is if your needle's not properly in. So when you have the needle put in at the top, you can see, you can actually see the top of the needle, it should, you should see it at the top. So if you don't see it there, it's not properly seated all the way up and you'll have issues with, with threading as well. But most of the time it works just like a charm and it's absolutely wonderful, much, much better than having to thread it manually. So with both the Verve and the Accord, they have the same sewing features. Um, again, I mentioned that the Accord has more decorative stitches. We'll show you that in a bit. So I'm gonna explain all the buttons on the front of the machine. So you notice we used the start stop button earlier when we were winding the bobbin. So that will go either from red to orange in the case when we're winding a bobbin, or when we're ready to sew or embroider, this will turn to green once it's, once it's ready for that. This is the reinforcement or back stitches in order to do that. This button here, as we explained earlier, was to lift the needle up and down. And after you're done stitching, the scissors here is to be able to cut your threads. Very, very handy feature. This here is the sewing speed control. So only when you're in sewing mode, this can control how fast or how slow you sew. Um, it also controls the, the speed that it winds the bobbin. When you're in embroidery mode, this doesn't do anything for you at all. If you want to control the speed of the embroidery, that's in the settings, and we'll talk about that later. So as for the controls on the front of the screen, this is the default screen that opens up when it detects that you're in sewing mode. So it means the embroidery arm is not attached. So this is a touch screen on here. Um, but there's also buttons here. This is a back button. These are the buttons that you'll use to go forward and back between screens. And then this is the button where you can access your decorative stitches. 
and we'll show you this right here is the menu that we'll go into later. But for now we're going to work with just the screen here. So this will show you currently right now it defaults to the 1-03 stitch. And with this, if you look, it has two lines at the beginning. So that has your traditional back stitch reinforcement stitch, where we'll go forward a couple and back a couple. And if you look at 1-04, this just has a dot. So that reinforcement stitch is just, it does a couple of stitches in the same place and makes a locked stitch there. If you look close enough, you'll notice that 01, 02, and 03, 04 all look very, very similar. The difference is, is that the three and four stitches are in the center. And if you watch the needle, if I change to the 01, it switches to the left. So this means that you're stitching on the left side of the foot. In order to change that down here on the bottom button on the screen, you can, the two triangles means to mirror it. So if we're on the left side, if we mirror this stitch, it's gonna now stitch on the right side. But more commonly, oops, more commonly, you're gonna wanna be stitching right in the middle. So I'm gonna quickly stitch out of just a couple lines um, with this reinforcement stitch to show you. And while I'm here, I'm also gonna show you. So over here, we have the backup stitch. So if you wanna push the backup or the reinforcement stitch right there, you can, but you can also set it that when you start stitching, that it automatically does that reinforcement stitch. So you don't have to remember to hit it. Also, when we hit the reinforcement stitch at the end of what we're sewing, you can have it automatically cut for you, which is really, really handy. So I'm gonna load my fabric under the foot. Um, and you remember to lower your presser foot. And if you notice that once the presser foot was lowered, we now have a green light on our sewing button. So you can either use the button to start or you can use your foot control. And you can see it's already done the backup stitch and now it's gonna stitch forward. I'm gonna hit this, so I'm gonna say I'm done with this stitch, so I'm gonna put my reinforcement stitch. And if you heard it, it automatically cut for me. So all I need to do is lift the pressure foot and it's all ready to go. So to show you the stitch, you can see that you can see the reinforcement stitch. You can see that you can see the reinforcement stitch at the front and the back, so it's a little bit of a denser stitch there. So next we'll show you how to do it with just the, the dot reinforcement stitch and you can tell the difference. So I'll switch the screen to 1-04. I'll put my thread back in or my fabric back in, lower the presser foot, it's ready to go. So now you'll see it's just doing three stitches in place. And when I stop it and reinforce, it just does three in place so it doesn't move forward and back and it cuts. So you'll see how it looks different between the two. Stitches. So you'll see how it looks different between the two stitches. So this one's a lot more clean depending on what you're looking at. So, if you're doing so depending on where you're stitching. So if you're doing stitches that are hidden, this doesn't matter at all, or this is nicer when you're doing top stitching. So on the menu, it also shows you for these plain stitches we have here, well, I'm gonna call them plain stitches, they're less fun. You can see that we have one out of five. So we've got multiple pages. In order to go between these pages, you'll just hit these arrows on the button. So you'll see there's zigzag stitches, all kinds of different stitches. And I strongly suggest you play around with these. It's lots of fun to play around with them. So I'm gonna show you how to go to some different decorative stitches. So down here on the panel, this button here that's got like a straight stitch, a zigzag, some leaves, and lettering. If you click on that, this will show you all the different options of fun stitches you have. So I'm gonna just pick option five, and I'm just gonna pick 5-01. So some other things that you'll notice in here, on the, the last page it was saying to use the J foot. This one it's recommending to use the end foot. Um, if you pick a buttonhole stitch, or something like that, you'll see that it wants you to change to a different feet. So it's a nice way to check that you're using the right foot. It'll also show you that these stitches have a width, a length, and a shift if you'd like to use that. Right now, I'm just gonna stitch it with just the default. So I'm gonna lower my foot. I'm gonna stitch out a few stitches. And you'll see these stitch a little bit different. Um, these machines are wonderful. The feed dogs are there to move move things forward. You don't really need to fight the fabric at all. You just want to just kind of keep it lined up when you're sewing. So you never should be fighting it. So we'll stop here. 
And this button up in the upper right hand corner, we press that. So this will allow you to change the width and the length of these stitches. And you'll actually have a slight thumbnail over here on the left. So as you change this, you can see it getting bigger. The other thing you should notice is these started all surrounded with black. And so if you ever want to go back to what the default was, you just go back until you see that turn black and that was the default setting. So if you ever want to go back to that. So I'm going to do this. So I've changed the width and the length. So the width is the width of the stitch this way. The length is forward and back when you go through that. So I'm going to go ahead and start it. And when we're done, I'm just going to do a thread cut. So this here, are the two stitches. So this is the default stitch. And this is where we increased the width and the length. And you can see it looks like a completely different stitch. So my homework to you is to get to make a quilt sandwich like I have here. It's basically just a piece of fabric, a piece of batting, and another piece of fabric. You put it together and you can play with all different kinds of stitches, play with all the different settings, change everything you can, and you probably find some really amazing things to make projects with. So I've switched to the Accord machine and I'm gonna stop to show you how to wind a bobbin and it's, um, load the thread on this machine. It's just slightly different, but there's a lot, a lot of similarities with it. And so obviously this one has the hinge top that we load this up on here. Um, it's very much the same where you've got the, the spool stand, you put that on and you put a thread cap right now. I just have this one handy, the little one. So the same hints apply. There's a little chart on where it starts with. So the first step is to go around this white plastic piece. Then you go under the metal. Now when you're winding a bobbin, you'll see that we go over here to the right and there's a metal piece here. We go behind the metal and come around in front and you go under the disc the same way you did on the verve. And the same thing applies on this one. I put the, the thread through the bottom of the bobbin. You push it on the post. And we kind of tighten up that string right there. We have that. And we push it over to the right. Exactly same thing happens. This turns orange and we hit start. We'll slow it down just a little bit. So while it's winding the bobbin, I do want to discuss things. So I'm actually using a different thread, if you noticed. So what I'm using is finishing touch bobbin thread. So when you're sewing, you can use pretty much any thread and bobbin thread, and you have really good results. With embroidery, we strongly recommend that you use finishing touch. It's a 60 weight thread as opposed to a 40 weight thread, and your stitch quality ends up being much, much nicer. So again, when your bobbin is completely full, it'll start kind of slowing down. So you'll go ahead and stop it, and then you can trim your thread. So, and just to show you, this is what the finishing touch looks like. You want to make sure you keep track of whether you're picking up a 60 weight or a 90 weight bobbin thread. For a machine that's dual purpose, where it's sewing and embroidery, you're gonna use the 60 weight. The other one is a, a green spool. You, make, you wanna make sure you don't grab that one. So putting the bobbin in is the exact same way that you did on the Verve. And I'll show you how we're gonna thread it. So this thread that we wound on the bobbin is just bobbin thread. You wouldn't use this for the top thread. On the top thread of embroidery, you're gonna want something fun and and colorful. So we sell Glide or Robeson Anton. We, we absolutely love these brands for embroidery. So this machine has a slightly different spool cap and this works really well with these embroidery threads and it just sits right in there. So again, we're going to follow the instructions. We're going to start with one, go down underneath the metal. We're going to go back around to two. We're gonna go down and up at three. And again, the same exaggerated around on four. At this put point, I lower the presser foot and you should still feel it being nice and tight. So that way you can get in here to six, 
until you hear it lock over. You go through the metal channel and then the, over the plastic seven. Back around to your thread cutter and you pull. See, I proved to you that this... So you remember to make sure that your needle is in the top right position. And then it threads perfectly like that. So as I mentioned before, when you go into embroidery mode, you need to make sure you have the embroidery foot attached just the way we did the other one. You need to make sure you have your embroidery arm attached and you wanna make sure you've got an embroidery needle in order to work with this. So now we're getting ready to do the fun embroidery with both the Accord and the Verve. Um, so the first thing we wanna talk about is stabilizer and this is probably the most confusing question, the, confusing, the most confusing piece when you start embroidery. There's three major types of stabilizer and I'm gonna back up just a second. What stabilizer is, is it's something that's gonna give stability to your embroidery project. Once you start stitching a lot of stitches, if for example, you're sewing on a t-shirt, it's all gonna bunch up. You know, t-shirts aren't designed to have a whole bunch of stitches really, really close. Also, when we go to load it in the hoop, which is how our sewing machine is gonna embroider something, it needs to have something that will hold flat and stable. So that's why we have stabilizer. So there's three main kinds of stabilizer. You have cutaway, which this one is cutaway. Um, and typically with a cutaway, what you're gonna see is, like if you've ever had a shirt that's embroidered, you'll actually see this material left over after the fact. So when you're done with a project, it's always gonna have this extra material because you cut away as close as you can get to the stitches, but it's still always gonna be there. The second kind is tearaway. So tearaway, if you do a project with it, at the end of it, you can actually tear it all away, but you still have the stabilizer underneath the stitches. The third major kind is wash away. And so this is a project that's done with wash away. And you can see, you don't see any stabilizer because when you're done sewing it, you run it underwater and all the stabilizer disappears and all you're left with is thread. So each project that you work on may work best with a different kind of stabilizer. Um, if you're doing a baby quilt, for example, maybe you don't want all this stiff stabilizer left behind. So maybe you want to tear away or wash away. If you're um, just doing something that's just like an art project or something or something large on a jacket back, it's not going to be a big deal to leave this behind. So it really depends what your end goal of the project is. The other thing to consider when you're picking stabilizer, because there's three major kinds, but there's a million different options. So the million different options are the thickness of it, how thin the stabilizer is or how thick the stabilizer is. So the trick with this like this is if you're doing a smaller stitch out like this script text here, it doesn't require quite as much stabilizer as you would need for a super dense stitch like this. So the thinner the stitches, the lighter weight stabilizer you need, the thicker and the more dense the overall pattern, whether it's text or whether it's a picture, is the different kinds of stabilizer you're gonna want. The other thing I want to I mention quickly, you're always going to want to use finishing touch so I recommended that you're always going to want to use finishing touch thread. The only exception to that is if you do something like freestanding lace, where you want the top thread and the bottom thread to match, then you can use the same 40 weight thread that you use on top on the bobbin as well. But generally speaking, you're going to want to use the finishing touch. So one thing I want to show you is on the back of this, so one thing I want to show you is on the back of this. So I know a lot of people are concerned using the finishing touch going, I'm using orange thread. I don't want to see the white thread show through the top. Well, if you look at the back of this, if your machine is stitching properly and you've threaded it properly and everything, this is how the back should look. It should look like an Oreo. So you should see the top thread, the bobbin thread, and then the top thread again. So if everything's working the way it's intended to be working, you should never, ever, ever see the bobbin thread on the top. So it shouldn't matter which color you're using. So now I want to show you how to load a hoop. Right now this is a five by seven hoop. So this is the largest hoop that we have for the Accord. The Accord also has the four by four hoop um, as well as the Verve. So one thing I want you to notice is this is a five by seven hoop, but if you go to measure it, it's not five by seven. The stitchable area that you're gonna go in is gonna be five by seven because it's gotta leave a little bit of a margin for the foot and everything to be in there. So when you're cutting materials to put in your hoop, you wanna make sure you don't cut it five by seven or you'll be way too short. So you definitely wanna make sure when you measure it, you have the hoop handy so that you can measure above and beyond. 
So depending on the project, you can either hoop just the stabilizer or you'll hoop the stabilizer and the material together. But first I want to show you a couple of different things about the hoop itself. So on these machines, they have a metal sidebar and there's two little areas where they will hook onto the, the arm of the machine. So we'll show you that. And then there's two pieces. So this part is the bottom and this will be the top. And we're gonna sandwich the, the pieces of stabilizer in between. If you look closely at these machine, at these hoops, they have a little arrow at the top so you can know to line those two pieces up. Also, there's a screw at the bottom that'll help you loosen or tighten the hoop. You wanna make sure that when you're putting something in here, you don't have it so tight that when you push it together that you can actually cause hoop burn on the fabric. So you want it to kind of slide in kind of nicely and then you can always tighten it up a little bit. So I'm gonna show you how we do this. So we're gonna load the stabilizer on. We're gonna load the fabric on, which typically is a little bit more pressed than that. I'm gonna loosen this up a little. And you just kind of work it around the edge until it kind of pops in. You can kind of maneuver the fabric as you want. As you play with this more, this will get easier and easier over time. Um, if you have a real stretchy material, you definitely don't want to pull on it like I'm doing right here. Um, so I'm just going to kind of tighten it just a little bit. This is just a scrap one. My recommendation to you is to you normally get a roll of stabilizer with your machine, um, pull out some scrap fabrics, and just play around with this, all the things. So I tightened it up. You should be able to feel all the way around the hoop that they're together. Um, and then when you're done, you can hear that it kind of sounds like a drum. So it's just nice and tight, nice and smooth. Everything's in there. Um, you don't have any pieces where you're missing fabric clamping on there that you have plenty of extra around the outside. And that's how you properly hoop. So now that we've properly loaded our hoop, now we need to load the hoop into the machine. So I want to show you here. Remember I told you we've got these two little notches on the hoop itself. So those are going to line up with these two little, they almost look like nail heads on the, the, on the machine itself, on the arm. So first things first, we need to make sure our presser foot is up, otherwise we're gonna have a hard time sliding our hoop in. You're gonna slide your hoop underneath the foot first, and then you're gonna line the hoop up with these two pins. So I've had the most success with lining it up with the back one first. You line it up with the back one, and then you pop the front one in, and it goes just like that. I found that if you go with the front first and go to the back, it's not nearly as successful, but if you start with the back and then go to the front, it works a lot better. Um, do not fight this. If you're pushing with all of your body weight, you're doing something wrong. So try to slide it forward and back, left and right to try to get in there. You can see it shouldn't require much effort at all. The other thing to mention is there's this little tab here and you use that to get it off. So you push this tab over and then again, always go from the back to the front. So if you push the tap in and then lift from the back, it comes right off. Nice and easy like that. And then again, to reload it, you put on the back and then push it on the front and it should snap right in. Just like that. So this is always a good time once you've loaded it to make sure that everything's out of the way. Um, if you have like a larger apron or something like that, you just wanna make sure none of the straps are underneath. If they're underneath, they're gonna get sewn. You don't want that. So make sure everything's free and clear. You also wanna make sure everything is free and clear of this arm. This arm is gonna be moving around and doing actions. So you don't want your glass of water here. You don't want your kid bumping up against this. You need to make sure this has a nice range of motion. So I wanted to take a moment to show you a little bit about when you first wake up the machine when it's in embroidery mode. So it detects that the embroidery arm is attached. So when you turn it on, you'll notice that it's a different screen right away. So it'll give you kind of a little display of what the machine is. And all you do is you tap it to get into the mode. And the very first thing it's gonna ask you is, is it okay to move the embroidery unit? So this is going to center itself. So, but it wants to make sure you're okay with it moving. So you hit okay and it'll go and calibrate where it needs to be and it's ready to go. So you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of different options on this than when you're in sewing mode. So I'm gonna explain some of them. This button on the bottom left is called the park button. And so when you're ready to turn off the machine or travel with it or take the embroidery arm off, you're gonna to wanna to do this 
and it'll basically park the machine over on the left. You're sewing with the embroidery arm. I guess you can't sew with the embroidery arm on this one. Okay, so the other buttons that are on here um, are, so these are the canned designs that we have on the machine. So if you go to exclusives, under celebrate, you can see we have a whole bunch of holiday decorations, uh, designs. So we have snowflakes, we have holly leaves, and again, you can go between the pages like this. Super fun. All the designs that are in your machine are set up, are sized to use for the hoops you have. So if you're on the Verve, all of the designs that are on the machine are set up for a four by four hoop. So that is tons of wonderful examples out there. If we go back, you can see we have a flower area, which just has different designs. So this has some more holiday ones. There's an Easter bunny, a heart, all kinds of fun stuff. So again, when I told you, use your stabilizer, grab all kinds of scraps, just practice stitching out. You've got tons of examples here to do. You don't even have to purchase anything extra right now. We have fonts in here that you can use. The exclusive script is the baby lock cursive. Like you see here with the cord, it's, it's very much like that. Or you can pick any other kind of font you have and there's multiple pages of those that you can go between. So we'll just go through, I'll just show you a basic example. So I'm just gonna start typing in my name. So once you hit the first character, you'll see that you have the option to pick whether you want large, medium, or small letters. So I'm just gonna pick medium and you can just toggle between those. And if you page forward, you can get to the lowercase letters. So once you have a word that you have selected, you can hit set. And so now this adds it to your hoop that you have here. So this is kind of a preview of what this is gonna stitch out at. So right now it'll actually tell you at the top the approximate size of the design. So it's 3.19 inches wide by 0.72 inches tall. Actually, why I have you on this, I'm gonna switch over to the setting screen to show you because by default it's not inches, it's millimeters. And, and if you're like me, I don't know millimeters. So the button, the second one on the bottom right, is our, our settings menu. When you go through here, you page through it. On page four here, you'll see that you have maximum embroidery speed. So this is 650 stitches per minute. If you ever need to slow down the embroidery, this is where you do it here. Again, this speed control here doesn't work. That's only for sewing. But right below that, you can actually set up whether you want inches or millimeters. And I prefer inches. This will not change the settings on sewing. The sewing will still always be showing millimeters because um, two millimeters doesn't make any sense in inches. It would be like 0 .00, not fun. So, but we won't go too much more into the settings, but I just wanted to show you that in case you weren't seeing inches here. You have a zoom feature here where you can click zoom. So if you can't quite see your letters, you can make them a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna keep them regular size. You have it where you can move the design so there's two ways to move. You can either click on it and move it with your fingers, or if you want any kind of more granular movement, you can move it with these. And if you ever want to go just straight to the center of the design, you hit the button in the middle. So if I go all the way up to the top and I hit the center, it goes straight to the middle. You can resize this if you want. So there's two different kinds of settings. You can do proportional sizing. Um, so you can go bigger at all angles or smaller at all angles or, angles, or you can do just vertical or horizontal resizing. So I will strongly suggest you pay attention when you're resizing. If you have like, I'm gonna say like a bunny rabbit, for example, if you put it in there and you size it this way, you're gonna have this really fat looking bunny. But if you size it proportionally, it'll look more, more true to form. So you can rotate it. Size there. In here, you can rotate it. Let's say, depending on the material that you hoop, maybe you hooped it a different way. So you wanna rotate it so it stitches out vertically as opposed to horizontally. Sometimes depending on the size of your design, it only fits in the hoop one way, so you'll need to rotate it just to be able to stitch it out. So you can do that in here. So the next one here, this is for picking a color. When you're playing around with designing it, you can use this here. Um, some people get really caught up in wanting to take all their designs and go and fix all the colors with these, but I feel like it's a waste of time. So the bottom line is whatever thread you load in is what it's going to stitch out with. You don't really need to mess with changing the colors, but if you just want to see what it looks like 
or if you want to make sure you've got the right object selected, you can set this the color. Here is the density, to be able to change the density of a stitch. This here is the density to be able to change the density of a stitch. I can consider that more of an advanced option. Uh, you shouldn't really ever be really messing with that. Um, if you size something too big, you may want to make it more dense, or if you size something really, really small, you might want to make it less dense. Those would be the cases that you'd want to do it. The font edit is if I wanted to change what I'm doing with this text here specifically. So if I go to array, I've got this word array and I can change it to where it's got curves. I can curve it less, I can curve it more. It won't stitch out this black line, that's just showing you the curve for the the, the angle that we have. That's what you go in here. I'm gonna make back into font edit. You have options to space the letters further apart or closer together if you want. You can see that kind of stretching out. You can change the font if you want. You can change the color of each. Let's see. You can go in and do all kinds of fun things where you can change the color of each letter or make each letter smaller or bigger. You can go into tons of different options here. Most people don't use all of that, but you can go there. Yeah, so you can play around with a lot of these settings. Again, not all of these are what you're going to use commonly, but just know that they're there and you can play with them. Feel free to play around with it. It's not a problem at all. Okay, if you didn't like this design or this text anymore, you can just hit delete. So I'll just kind of show you that. And then it'll ask you if you want to delete it and then you start over from scratch again. Um, the other thing we have here is under shapes, you have all these different shapes. So let's say I want to create a, a label for a quilt. Let's say I want to do a heart. So I can go out here between these hearts and pick which one I like. Let's say maybe I want this kind of lacy heart. And you'll do set. And you can size this how you want. And then let's say you want to add text into it. So here you can do add and you can add designs or you can add text or anything like that. I'm going to go with one of these. Ooh, that's way too big. So maybe I won't go with that one. So this you can always go back a screen if you need to. Go back here and then I'm going to pick a font. Well, let's go with that one. And here I can make it bigger and fit it in here. Center it up as I need it. If you want to go, so right now there's two objects on the screen. There's the heart and the B. So if you want to switch between them, sometimes you can click them. If they're overlapped like this, you can't really click them. So there's a select button down here. So if you see the heart is selected. So when I hit select, it switches to the B. So then you can change the settings appropriately on that. So I'm going to move them both to the center. So they're like that. I'm going to go ahead and set color just so there's different color stops. So you can see there's a little thumbnail over on the right. So I'm going to say I want the heart. I'm just going to pick this for example, the heart that and the B in black. I don't have those colors so we'll have to do something else. But. So when you're done with all this basic editing, then you can do edit end. And then here's kind of your final little placement before you stitch it out. So in here you can kind of where you want it to be on the in the hoop. You can move it around and you can say you want it back to center. One of the really cool features of these machines is this trace feature. So there's a square with an arrow on it and when you select that it has it where you can pick the positions like if I want to see the top left hand corner where this will stitch out or the top right hand corner or what's even neater is if you hit this trace button it'll actually trace through the whole rectangle of where it's going to stitch. Now keep in mind I'm stitching a heart so I mean it's not really going to stitch in the outer corners but it gives you a good placement. So if you've loaded something that has um, maybe you've got fabric that's got like a cute teddy bear and you want to make sure the heart goes right around the teddy bear's face you can actually kind of place it properly to get it in there. Once you're done with that then you're going to hit embroidery and so now you're truly ready to embroider. And I'll show you what the screen is. So on the left hand side, it's going to kind of give you a visualization of what the end project is going to be. Up at the top, it reminds you you want to use the Q foot, which is the embroidery foot, which is what we have installed. It'll tell you that this particular design that we've designed is 2,061 stitches and we haven't stitched any yet. It says that it's approximately a four minute stitch out. 
and that we have two color stops. And you see down here we have two color stops. We have the red for the heart and we'll have the black for the letter. So that's really handy to use and handy to keep track of, especially when you're using more advanced embroidery designs um, from other locations, whether it's Kimberbell or OESD or anything else online. So from here, once you're ready to do it, you've got your fabric in your hoop with your stabilizer, your hoops loaded, all this is set up. The only two things left to do, you lower your presser foot. Once your presser foot's lowered, then let's see what color I have. We've got teal loaded in here. We're gonna do the heart and teal, and then you just hit start. And then from here, it just starts stitching that out. So once that step is done, you can look at the display and you can see we're now on step two out of two and it's telling us the next step will be the letter B. So now is where you would go and change your, your thread and you're always going to want to snip your thread up the top and then you pinch the needle and pull it out once you lift the presser button. And this is the same for sewing or embroidering. You want to make sure you don't pull the thread backwards through the machine. You switch to your second color, load your spool cap, and with embroidery you're going to get very good at threading the machine because you'll do a lot of it with all the different color stops. And your presser foot's down, you're ready to go. You just hit start again. Okay, once you're done embroidering, it'll tell you that it's finished embroidering and it leaves it here. So at this point, if you've really liked this design and you would like to save it to the machine, we can go back here and there's this little pocket here. If you hit the pocket, you have the option to either save it externally to a USB or save it onto the machine itself. So I'm going to save it to the machine. We'll show you how to retrieve it from there in just a minute. So again, when you're unloading it, you press the little release lever, lift it from the back, from the front, lift the presser foot. And this is what it's stitched out. And the more you play with this, the more you'll see that this is a running stitch. And this is a satin stitch. And you'll notice that when they stitch out, you'll, they'll be different speeds. So the machine in some areas will speed up and slow down where it needs to. That's why you don't really need to mess with the speed control. But you can see that um, the stabilizer did a really good job. We don't see any puckering with the fabric or anything. Again, the back looks beautiful. So that stitch out went beautifully. And I'd love to tell you that every time you stitch something out, it's gonna go perfectly, but that's not the case. Occasionally your top thread will break. You'll run out of bobbin thread. Your kids will come in and bump the arm. I mean, lots of things happen. So I wanna show you some ways to work around that and how to fix things and get back there. So I'm just going to load another simple design real quick. I hope it's simple. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move it up. Um, move it up to the top. And so because I already have something stitched out, I want to do the trace just to kind of make sure it's not going to overlap too bad. It might still overlap, but this is a practice thing. Again. It'll be good. One thing I want to mention for the Accord, you won't have this on the, the Verve, but at the top of the screen, it'll actually show you. So the Accord actually supports three hoops. It only comes with two, but there is a teeny, 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 tiny little round one. I don't really know the good use for that one, but um, based on where you've positioned and laid this out, it'll actually show you which hoop you have to use, whether you can use the 5x7 or the 4x4. With the Verve, you're only going to have the 4x4, so it's only going to allow you to keep within that hoop. And these machines are really, really smart, and they're really good at making sure that you're not ever stitching outside the hoop. So that's handy. So I'm going to go ahead and start stitching this out. 
and we're gonna simulate a thread break. So I'm just gonna stop in the middle of it. Um, I want you to use your own judgment. If anything sounds weird, if anything looks weird, you're always gonna hit the stop button and then we can figure out how to, to fix things from there. So I'm gonna pretend at this point that the thread broke or the bobbin ran out. Now these machines are smart enough to tell you when they detected a thread break or when the bobbin runs out. So you'll have some kind of error on the machine. Um, you'll just need to hit okay on it. And from this point, this is how do we fix this, right? So the first step is to do the thread cut because we wanna cut the top of the bottom thread. So if either one of them broke, we still need to cut the other thread. We're gonna lift the presser foot. And you take the hoop out of the machine and then you need to figure out what's going on. If the bobbin ran out, then you just go in here, pop in a new bobbin. You load it in and just hit go. You don't even need to go back stitches. If the top thread broke, chances are there may be several stitches that were missed on this. So. You load this back up. You've correct whatever you need with the top thread. And on here, there's a button that's a needle with a plus and minus. So what this gives you the ability to do is go forward stitches or backward stitches. So you can either go by one at a time, by tens or by hundreds, and you also have the ability to do a color stop. So let's say you were doing a more complicated design, you were doing applique, and you realize you forgot to do something, you needed to go back and lay an applique piece. You can go back here and go back color stops. So like here I went all the way back to the beginning, it'll stitch again, or I can fast forward and go to the next color stop if let's say I'm like I don't really want to if you want to skip, like maybe there's text and you don't want to do the text, you can always just skip past the text. So in this case, we'll go back to where it was. And on the screen, if you look close enough, there's a green crosshairs and I'll actually tell you that's where it's stitching. We're going to go back to zero. And so we want to kind of go back to where I was. So you just want to kind of trace back to wherever you wanted to be. And then you lower your presser foot and you continue. The other thing I wanted to mention is that if you start stitching something and you realize you've used the wrong color, you can always stop it, cut the thread, change your thread to a different color, go back to the beginning of that thread stop and start again. Oops, let me cut first. Go back to the beginning of the thread stop and start again. Um, most of the time, if it's a simplistic enough, um, if it's just like a running stitch, you can stitch over it. Satin stitches do really good. Um, caution between the colors. So kind of like if you paint a, a wall red, it's really hard to paint it white after the fact. If you've got really, really bright colors, it's sometimes hard to cover it up. But a lot of times you can just stitch right over it and it looks just fine. You never know you put the wrong color in. So that's very handy. So while these machines have a lot of different designs you can choose from, you're going to want to stitch more than what's available on the machine. So I want to show you how to load the, the files in through USB. So anytime you're done with the design, if you just go all the way back to the beginning, It'll ask if you want to cancel the current pattern. You want to say, okay, it gives you back to the home screen. And so you have two ways of loading extra designs. You can load it from USB or from the machine. I'm going to show you from the machine first. And you'll see these are the, the files that are loaded in the machine. So this one here was the one that I saved from earlier that you can see. So we got it from there, um, but we've already stitched that one. We're not going to mess with that one. Oops, let me go back. So now, from USB, but in order to do the USB, you must first put in a USB. Um, USBs, make sure they're not too large. Um, we found on some machines, if they're larger than eight gig or even all the way up to 128 gig, that you tend to have issues. If you have problems where it's not loading the USB, try USBs that are smaller in size. Uh, PES files are the embroidery files that you're gonna use on the machine. So when you purchase embroidery designs online or you get designs from Camera Bell or OESD, you wanna make sure that you load the PES files onto your USB. Once you do that and you load the USB, you click the USB button and then it will read the USB. It'll show you any folders that you have that you can drill down if you need to, or it'll show you the pictures of the designs you have. If you happen to have a design that's for a large like six by 10 hoop, you'll see it, but you'll see it's grayed out. So it won't let you add it because it knows it's too big for any hoop that you have. So you have to work with 
what you have here. Um, once you pick the design you want, once you select it up at the top, it'll tell you roughly what the size of it is. Like this one's 3.8 by 2.9. Um, so that can help you sometimes. A lot of designers of embroidery will give you multiple sizes. You know, they may give you a 4x4 four four size and a 5x7 and a 6x10. So you can use this tip to be able to make sure you're picking the right one you want. So once you pick the one you want, you hit set. And then you can see it's loaded in your screen. And then from there, you can go into moving it and sizing it. Most of the time, you just leave it right in the center. And then when you go to embroider, you can see it has the multiple different steps that are there. In this particular one, it's an applique. So you'll see the first step is doing a placement line of the crown. And then if we go forward, then it's going to do the crown again. So after the first one, then you're going to lay your piece of fabric on there. And then you're going to stitch this again. And once that's stitched, then you can cut around. And then the next step goes to do the heart, and that's an applique and so forth. But you can see, uh, really using the tool as the little thumbnail on the right, you can kind of see what colors are programmed in there. Sometimes they're logical, sometimes they're not. If it's a leaf pattern and it's showing purple, don't make your leaves purple, make them whatever color you want them. But it's nice to see what's coming up. It also shows you the time on each color stop. So like on this one, it's gonna only stitch the blue for a minute and the, the darker pink for a minute, but when it goes to do the lighter pink, it'll take five minutes. So that's really nice just to kind of know for planning how long you're gonna be sitting there waiting for it. Um, some people strongly suggest not ever leaving your machine when you're embroidering. Um, I'm kind of the opposite. I don't get things done if I don't do other things while I'm embroidering. Um, I'm definitely within earshot, but a lot of these machines are, are fabulous about detecting things that go wrong. Even if something gets caught, the fabric gets caught around your foot and does stuff, it'll detect that things aren't right and it'll shut down and it'll stop. So they're, they're really intelligent machines and they do a wonderful job with this. Um, but that's how you load it from a USB. Uh, the other option that you have, if you go back when you add this, when you pick from the USB, you also have the option directly here that if you have it on the USB and you want to save it locally to your machine, you can save it locally. If it's something you're going to stitch out multiple times, you don't want to always use the USB, that's an option too. Um, the same way too, if you've designed something, for example, like we designed this heart. Now I've got way too many things on here. Once you have the heart, you can also do it where you save it to the USB as well um, so that you can save it for, for backup purposes. So that's how you add in designs and you know the basics of embroidery of both the Verve and the Accord. So it really is pretty simple. You're going to load your design, do your editing. You're going to lower your presser foot and hit go. Um, aside from that, all of the creativity is just the types of fabrics that you use the colors of threads that you use and the designs, but there's an endless world of possibilities with this and it's so much fun and I'm happy that you have your own machine to play with this and we'd love to see pictures of the projects you come up with because it's definitely um, an addicting hobby. <laughs> so have fun. <laughs>